So anyway, so we're coming up to, we've launched for about three or four months in and things are going well, but they're not going so well to pay the mortgage. Sure. And it was, it was the start of me understanding what it takes to be an entrepreneur and how really you need to have a strong spine all the time because things go, wee, things are amazing. And then, oh, <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen now? Wee, and it's a roller coaster. This is Startup to Storefront. Today's guest is Anthony Bartlett, who is the CEO and co-founder of Real Plans. Real Plans is an all-in-one meal planning app that helps you plan, shop, and cook your food with recipes that cater to just about any dietary restrictions, hectic schedules, or personal taste. Anthony was uniquely suited to help kickstart this company, having designed similar programs for software giant SAP. Together with his ex-wife Emily, whose careful curation of the recipes and blogging make up the other half of the equation, they built a company that Inc. Magazine included among the top of their list of the fastest growing innovators in America. So listen in as we cover everything from the biggest mistake Real Plans made as a company, how Anthony calculated how many subscriptions it would take for him to quit his day job, and why leftovers are the best thing you can see when you open your fridge. Now, back to the episode. Welcome to the podcast. We're here with Anthony from Real Plans. Great to be here. Tell us a little bit about what your company does. We are an automated online meal planner. So you say how many meals you want to cook in a week, uh, what your diet is. And by diet, I mean what you actually eat. So you could, I eat everything, but I just don't eat tomatoes or mushrooms. Or, Got it. So you can put your preferences. Yeah. Or I'm gluten-free, pescatarian. And, and paleo. I, and paleo. And I don't eat <laughs> asparagus that's my diet and then we come up with a really kind of convincing weekly plan which is a set of recipes on a on a calendar yeah it consolidates a shopping list and a timeline okay and then you go around the kitchen going well i've already got salt already got you know paprika whatever and then you go to the shops and then you gather everything else and you come back got it and people love it because it's Real Plans was really a, a, a play on the idea that we're real pragmatic, but it's also real food. So we don't have mm. any kind of Oreo cookie sure. recipes. We ignore the last 60 years of processed food and go back to cooking with That's ingredients great. that you can pronounce and, you know, actually work with in your kitchen. What made you want to start the company? Were you guys like having the issue of what do we cook this week? Yeah. So um, it started actually many years ago, about like. 15 years ago. Wow. And my then wife, my ex-wife, she was uh, an acupuncturist. Okay. And I set up a website for her, what have you, for her practice. And she started getting more and more into nutrition and realizing that a lot of the ailments that people were having were to do with food. Mm -hmm. All kinds of fascinating stories coming back. And so she got deeper into it. And then we started getting into Western Price. You ever heard of that? No, no. He was an American doctor back in the day, um, about 80, 90 years ago. And he was mystified as to why his affluent urban clients had all this like tooth decay going on. And yet there were all these explorers coming back from the antipodes, you know, hmm. from, from anywhere, Australia or kind of Africa or whatever. And, and you'd see all of these su supposed savages with beautiful teeth. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> So he thought, well, maybe diet has got something to do with health. And he took his camera, went around the world and took all these shots, like gummy shots, like he grabbed people's mouth and opened them up. Uncomfortable. And uncomfortable. <laughs> but there were all these amazing cases of, you know, brothers. One, one would be like in the city, one would be still in the countryside. And he pulled together a thesis of what constituted a good diet and mm. led to health. And it was that you should eat locally, seasonally. You always contentiously eat a little animal protein, which helps for you to ingest all the nutrients. And we got into it. So we got this great cookbook that was all kind of based on kind of Western price. And um, it ended up being this way of life for us. And we got really into it. So anyway, the website went from strength to strength. And uh, got what's the secret? Is it, is it non-processed food or what was? Yeah, the... it, it was just the basic keeping it simple. Yeah. So how grandma used to cook. Going back there was to stuff the like there was um one of the main tenants is the idea that you soak your grains at night. 
And the reason for it is because a lot of grains have phytic acid, which is like a little snowflake type thing. Okay. And then when you soak your grains, the phytic acid comes off the grain. Yeah. And the next day you then cook it and it's easier to cook too, right? Huh. But if you don't soak your grains, the phytic acid, let's say you eat a bowl of rice with broccoli, all the nutrients in the broccoli clings then to the phytic acid and it, and it, and it, you poop it out basically like yeah. it, it flushes through and so then you don't metabolize the nutrients that you're eating interesting basic stuff and and all of these people you know desert dwellers coastal dwellers forest dwellers wherever they're from they all had very similar ways and traditional ways of preparing food and so you know it didn't matter there'd be like there was this famous village somewhere in uh, in Europe that was um difficult to get into like a, a horse and cart could hardly get in because it was like this tiny little kind of sure. rock face you had to go through and they didn't clean their teeth they didn't hardly do anything but they were super hardy children and it was because they were eating like <laughs> cheese local bread you know just it didn't really matter yeah but it was local you know organic obviously totally uh, seasonal so anyway so we ate like that for as, as a family okay and uh it was it went great great energy things were good yeah and so that went led into creating some pdf meal plans you know right because like, this is if it's 15 years ago <clears throat> yeah and we went out and through the website we met lots of really interesting other food based bloggers okay like um wellness mama um there's a huge right now katie spears and seth spears um jenny mcgrother nourish kitchen um Michelle Tam, Norman on Paleo, all when, of these different people. When you say met them, did they reach out or did you reach out or something like that? It's a small world, kind of. Um, where it, it kind of was smaller back then mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the food bloggers and the recipes and the people, you know, mm -hmm. the rebels who are trying to educate the public on alternative ways of, of doing things outside of the, um, the standard American diet or the food pyramid that the government produces. Right. And so we met, you know, made lots of good friends through that with similar interests and we went to you know entrepreneurial meetups and things like that and that's how we met people and then uh she puts out this uh pdf like weekly pdf gets people to subscribe and it was just like what well, reading this week or yeah she's a, no she had um she made five dinners consolidated shopping list our first ever employee charlene was like counting the apples and you know, there was always wow. like some mistake on the shopping list or something. Just, just a little one. Yeah. Like, oh, I forgot to put the uh, <laughs> dill weed or <laughs> right. You know, whatever herb. So anyway, we created that, and meanwhile, I'm working as a kind of a coder, okay, con consulting for SAP, like a really huge ERP. Yeah, yeah, big company. Big company who you know the their systems run. My sister company. works for them. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. the the big one or the little like, uh, SAP business one or the the big one, uh, the one that runs McDonald's or the one that runs the local. Probably business. the one that runs McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. So I ran the one that went to four to ten million dollar, mm -hmm. five to fifty million dollar businesses, but I was able to make because I had this strange two sided kind of relationship to computers. On the one side, I knew how to speak computer, and the mm -hmm. other side. And how to speak human. And often you have developers who can speak and can't really uh, articulate ideas very well. Or you have project managers and, and business folk who know all about the business and then write a functional, functional specification and hand it to a developer. Right. And I was able to do both. So I had a whale of a time. Like so you're kind of like a product manager. Product manager, but coder as well. The coder, yes. And so, so you could help. clients yeah. loved it. I'd sit down and we created beautiful crystal palaces of logic there's a company called envelopments down in in the oc and also monkey sports i don't know if you know those guys who no. are a huge sports retailer and in both cases we built these beautiful systems that did all kinds of things and were way faster than the humans mm. um, and i even got to the point on this one at envelopments where they're a company that build uh really cool little cards you know cards wedding invitations birthday things whatever but they're super complicated you know three inserts and a fold here and a drill piece here i mean we built sap and personalized it, like made it into sure. a person we called it hal out of 2001 and 
keep kept giving it rules about the warehouse and the order of doing things and how long it would take a machine to do something and where everything was stored. And there came a point where Hal started making decisions that we couldn't understand. It was like, get the yellow card and do that cutting first and then pass it to this operator and then do this. And we're like, okay, Hal. But we reduced order times by, you know, 70%. Yeah, we were able to push so many orders through because the computer had taken over. And it was through that experience that I realized that algorithms are incredibly powerful. And, and when you put a computer in the right place at the right time to do the right kind of things, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a whole kind of Japan robots that, you know, little dogs or things that can help you and you, you kind of keep you company. And we try and humanize them as much as possible. I think that people bark up the wrong tree. The, the, the things that computers are really good at right now with our current understanding of them is that they're really good at making a billion calculations in a second. Like our stock markets are run by computers and all that kind of right. stuff. But if you turn that onto a company or to an idea, they can do things really cleverly. So when we came to do the PDF meal plans, people kept writing back and going, oh, love the plan. So cool. But I'm not into salmon. Any way you could make a plan for me? That's that's fascinating to think about from yeah, a code perspective. Yeah, from yeah. Back in the day, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like coming at the salmon. Right. I'm, you're like, oh, next so challenge. Yeah. How do we remove the salmon? How do we remove fish? Is right. it salmon? Is it fish? The wheels start turning in the your brain. The wheels start turning. And then, yeah. and then people are going, well, it's great having the dinners, but, you know, maybe your breakfast would be nice. or Right. <laughs> Smaller meals. And Snacks. <laughs> and so, so the X is all like, started just tearing up all the time going oh my gosh how can i possibly do this this is incredible i mean she worked super hard to kind of try and please everybody but it was an impossible task and people kept writing and kept writing and i said oh i could get a computer to do that yeah because i'd had all this experience of teaching sap to dance to my tune to the customer's Mm -hmm. tune yeah it was a beautiful dance i'm like oh we could do this to meal planning because no one's doing this Right. No one on the market has really fig- figured this out and made it so it's completely personalized. Both, and it's just inputs and outputs. Mm-hmm. But the trick is really knowing how to assimilate all this information. And she said, there's no way you can build this. You know, no one's going to be able to, you know, a machine can't build a meal plan. Like, I spend hours over this stuff. And I said, all right, well, give it a shot. So anyway, a year later, first, like, totally bootstrapped. I literally start in my garage. That's great. I clear out the garage, the front of the house. Car gets parked outside. <laughs> set a desk up. And in the evenings and weekends, I get going. So I'm doing my day job, keeping everyone happy. Right. And then I develop a caffeine habit because <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> having to stay awake in the evenings and during the weekends. And I have no social life for two years. That's great. And it, it was one of those moments in my life where I knew I had to push the pendulum yeah and all the time that i'm doing this i'm exercising like an idiot like i don't stop i have this i have this great martial arts practice and i have a teacher called master z down by lax dharma health institute and the more i work the more i'm doing this martial arts stuff wow and it's two years of like incubating and going through this stuff and literally i'm whiteboarding yeah with, with emily going so what's you know what what happens now and we launch and there's this moment where I've got like a safe corporate job, mm-hmm. right? And we have a discussion about what we're going to do because I need to work full time on this now. It's evident that I need to get going. Yeah. And we're, we're, at, we're just launching and we figure out how many subscriptions per day and then the lifetime value of those subscriptions, obviously you need that, to figure out how many it would take for us to be able to cover all of our bills Mm -hmm. and not get into more debt. And we had, you know, we paid for things on credit cards and stuff, developers and because I could do all the database side, but I needed presentation layer outsourcing. Right. So uh, we're walking on the beach down in Venice and we figure it out. And I'm like, all right, we make a decision. All right. I'll do this. So you got your number of subscribers that you need. Yeah, number of subscribers. We need like eight or something a day or something to cover my salary, which was, you know, paying for 
Every she, was, she was still working from acupuncturists to bring other stuff, but we're living in LA. Yeah. So to cover the mortgage and things like that. So we do it. And I trade out my Audi S5 convertible. Love that guy. <laughs> for a, you traded it for freedom. It's a good car. No, no, no. Oh, for yeah. freedom. For a Fiat 500E. Okay. For $120 a month. And that was because I got the sunroof. It was 110 if you got, didn't get the sunroof. <laughs> Worth it for that extra 10 bucks. Electric car, 90, 90 mile range. Loved that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Off the traffic lights, zero to 20. And like, I, I beat a Camaro SS on Lincoln Boulevard. I believe in it. that thing. That's all torque. Up to 20 miles an hour. And then he took over. Yeah. yeah. But I knew he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, driving around my little Fiat, um, sitting in a garage, working on this thing. Anyway, we're coming up to, we've launched and it's kind of going well. You know, like people are into it and they're converting. And they're, What are you charging the subscribers at this time? Um, What's the business 14, model? It's a, it's a monthly, so it's a SaaS business. Okay. Um, software as a service. And we're charging $14 a month and then $11 a quarter or $6 if you do the annual. So and they're, so they're just getting dollars. recipes Basically sent recipes, to yeah. them, and they can they can they can right. personalize it as much as they want. And we, and not only that, but we're madly cooking recipes, f- photographing them, coming up with content as well at the same time as doing all that. And she was the, the kind of queen of content, all that kind of stuff, and did all that stuff. So anyway, so we're coming up to we've launched for about three or four months in, and things are going well, but they're not going so well to pay the mortgage. Sure. And we're like, oh my gosh, and it was. It was the start of me understanding what it takes to be an entrepreneur and how really you need to have a strong spine all the time because things go, wee, things are amazing. And then, oh, <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen now? Wee, and it's a roller coaster. Yeah. And you just got to hold it together. Did Tai Chi help out okay. with that when you were? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. It's, it's, the, it's, your... it's the great balancer of things. Totally. I mean, Tai Chi is a weird thing. I mean, I, I didn't know any of this stuff when I came to... <laughs> yeah. I was an unfit Englishman when I came to LA. So how were you and your wife dealing with it? Were, was like one of you dealing with it a little bit better than the other? Or was it a... Well, where she, you guys were balancing each other out? I mean, she almost lost it doing the blog. I mean, she really worked hard on mm. that blog and nonstop. And I, you know, I was doing the corporate thing, but I was quite often taking the kids at the weekends or whatever else. And she was just madly writing content about whatever. Yeah. Coming up with some really good stuff too. And I was the one who was kind of steady Eddie. And then when I started coding, she took over and took on a lot of the kid stuff and let me like whole weekends where I would just see nothing and I would just be coding, 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 coding. Yeah. Did, um, it, did, it, so did you think about raising money at that time where you said, maybe, maybe we can go raise some money and then this solves the issue. We had offers and okay. because people close to us were like, Oh, this sounds like a good idea. Do you, you want a <laughs> yeah. you you hundred grand? You know, right. Um, we said, no, we don't need it right now. Okay. You know, it's really interesting. So that's nice. I mean, that, that gives comfort in some way, right? Cause there's still signals from the market that are saying, Hey, you're onto something. And so mm. it, it sort of reduces the pain in some way. It, it does, but it takes, it really takes you facing your fears when you do this, mm. I think, in order to move forward with it and to not stay in a dogmatic position. You know, the one way that you're used to doing. Right. The comfort of the office, the comfort of having someone else tell you what to do and everything else. The structure, yeah. The structure. And really going out on a limb and doing something different is where it's at. Yeah. And also believing you can do it. Yeah. I mean, having the audacity to say, I can come up with a product that will really help people mm-hmm. and maybe help a sector of the market that's not that's underserved right now. To even have that idea is pretty hardcore, really. For sure. Because most people are like, you know, right now you could go, okay, car, taxi services, oof, Uber's got it, Lyft's got it, you know. Yeah. But someone, someone somewhere right now is going no i can take on these guys I, sure. I i could i could do this yeah you know luba or whatever <laughs> you know or whatever you just come up with some sitting name and just get going and you it's just the act of doing it means that it's gonna at some point someone will take over uber some someone will come up with a cooler idea for sure don't wonder. whatever anyway so i'm sitting at a party like a it was kind of a food party type thing um for expo west which is a huge food 
exhibition and a bunch of our blogger friends in there and I'm sitting around at this party and don't really know very many people because I've you know, got my head down. I don't right. really, I'm, not, I'm not out there on the internet You're looking on the coding at things. Set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting next to this really nice lady and we're chatting. We've got our feet dangling in the hot tub of this nice house and chat about food and she goes, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I've got this meal plan I've been working on. It's, it's amazing. You can do all this different stuff. So what do you do? She goes, oh, you know, I've got a website and have some recipes and, you know, I, I try and inspire people to to eat good food. And I have like pictures of every time that I prepare the food so that people have a pictorial understanding of how to prepare recipes. It works really well. Like, oh, cool. So, and she said, well, what do you think about putting my recipes into your meal plan? <laughs> yeah. I went, yes, we can do that. Yeah. And I said, we could do that in two months. No idea how I was going to do it. The framework hadn't been built. Nothing. There weren't even tables for add-on recipes or anything. And, I'm, and I had the idea previously that this could be something that we could do, but here was someone who was just going, yeah, I'll do it. So I'm like, all right, great. So I walk over to Emily. I said, oh, that lady over there, see her? She's, um, she's, she's, <laughs> she's going to, we've, we've just struck a deal. We're going to, you know, she's going to put a recipe. We're going to, you know, do it for a, a dollar a month. And she's going to be an affiliate of ours and sell real plans and stuff. And she looks at me and she goes, Anthony, that's Michelle Tan from Num Num Paleo. She's like a, my hero. You know, she's a celebrity. She's in Whole Foods, like on, on the vegetable counter, wherever going, Nom Nom Paleo says this is a good idea. She has this amazing brand and she works with her husband on, on stuff. And wow. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we just partnered with her. Great. Well, we just partnered with her. So anyway, we send out a contract, we make one up and solid and we go back and forth. And then two months later, Michelle puts real plans on her website, does a really, you know, high level link on her site and says, you should... Give this a go. Mm -hmm. And she was super honest as well. She goes, I don't really meal plan that much. But I know that a lot of you do. And you've asked me about meal plans with my recipes and how to do paleo from a meal planning perspective. These are the guys who are really kind of hot right now. You should try them out. Boom. That first day. Order. Boom, 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 boom. So on my phone, I had a little, I, being the geek head, I had a little ding on my phone every time an order came in. Yeah. yeah. So like throughout the day, we'd get like about six or eight orders. And I'd go, ding, yay. Oh, is it? Oh, it's an annual. Great. Someone's. Yeah. And, yeah, it, yeah. and it was a response. It wasn't. And it, and it, this is like Shopify. It's like cha-ching. Yeah. And you get an and what, order. And what, what you think is going to happen, you think outside of it. And when you dream about it, you're like, oh, man, you, you want the sound to be ka-ching. Right. And you go, oh, I'm going to make lots of money. But when you're actually in it. Yeah. That's not how it works. Right. You go, okay, someone else has put their faith into me and they've just put their credit <laughs> card down. And now it's my responsibility to, to make deliver. sure that they have a yeah. good time, that they, they, they're really into it. I have somehow managed to inspire someone to throw energy at me. That's what money is. It's just energy. Yeah. And if, if you come up with a really good idea, Something that's going to help them that they can't, they don't have time to figure out for themselves. Money just goes thrown at you. That's a great way of looking at it. And it's a responsibility. Yeah. You don't get that money and then get to just, you know, spend it on a yacht or something. You right. got to do something with, you got to invest yeah. it back in your business. So we never really needed investment because we started, you know, paying commissions for people, but it was, it's a cash basis because we're paying commissions based on sales that have already happened sure 30 day refund period blah 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 you know like kind of stuff yeah and uh, it worked out great so from a cash flow perspective it's a great business model yeah it wasn't like um you know if i needed to buy inventory and then try and sell it or if that inventory was seasonal or seasonal or perishable suck right you know like oh right. gosh okay i've just bought a bunch of milk anyone wants some milk <laughs> yeah you got two weeks to get rid of, to, to move it along right you mentioned that you know, there was a responsibility to deliver uh, when all these people started signing up. What did you reinvest that money in uh, after that huge order? We invested the money in customer support. That was the very first thing we did. So, and then you would automate that, I'm sure, at some point. Or no, it was is it hands on? People are they're just calling in, emailing in. We have we have chat support. Okay, and we have it 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. every day. Wow. wow. And we have... Somebody. What is it that they're asking? Is it like, how, oh, do, how do I make this? Everything. Okay. 
I can't log in. I can't do this. I can't do that. And it's, and it's all on them, you know. <laughs> sure. They've got sure. like a, they've got a, you right. know, they're trying to get in on their old browser from 1982 or something. Yeah, yeah. No, it was 82. Around the 90s, you know. Sure. Windows 95. Windows 95. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Windows 3.1. It's not working. And so, so there's that. And then there's people, yeah, walking around, walking around uh, the store. And they're like, um, do you have, do you know any Whole30 compliant mayonnaise? You know, where to, mm. yes, Primal Kitchen, go there. You know, go and find Primal Kitchen. So you have all kinds of different questions coming in, but it, it's it's support. Yeah. Because when you're running a SaaS business, an online SaaS business is a deeply impersonal experience unless you come up with a way of humanizing the experience. Yeah. And feeding yourself and feeding your loved ones is a deeply personal and vulnerable position to be in, right? Every time that you cook sure. some food... And it's not just for you or even for yourself. There's a moment when you're, it's all coming together. And you're like, oh, is this going to be good? Yeah. <laughs> right. I've cooked this a million times before, but my new girlfriend's here. And is it going to work out? Once again, the pressure to deliver. The pressure to deliver. And then, and then it happens. And then you see their face and they go, oh, wow. This is the best lasagna <laughs> legit I've ever eaten in my life. And you're just relieved. You're not even excited. <laughs> you're just <laughs> like, oh, phew. <laughs> and then at some point, technology shifting, right? And so you you sort of go from this internet phase, websites gets easier to make, yeah. iPhone apps come out. Yeah, Are you guys like to... a first mover on the app? Oh, yeah. We had to do iOS app, Android. We tried to come up with, if there's any kind of super geeks out there, frameworks that would handle all of it. Yeah. You know, like HTML5 kind of website. Doesn't exist Android. though, does it? It, it, does. it does. There are frameworks. Because Xcode is like... They a... just don't work. Right. Not not in my experience. And I'm sure someone's going to write to me now going, yes, well, Maybe they, they can do. just reach out to you and tell you. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, they're all super different. Well, we found that by building natively, we will really be able to leverage the different platforms. Mm -hmm. And they all have interesting nuances about how they function. And so by writing things in native iOS code and native Android code, we were able to cover a lot. More. And, and also, there are lots of other phones that are using Android. You know, it's not just like Sam. Not everyone has a Samsung, right? You know, and right. so if they're using Android, then by being a native Android, it works really well. They do a lot of the kind of um, porting for you, especially around the graphics when you're doing stuff. Anyhow, so we launch all this. It's all going very well, and then um, it's going so well that uh, we start reaching out, going, "Does anyone else, you know, want recipes in our meal plans? Because it's going, you know, it's going pretty good, mm -hmm. right?" Cut long story short, we end up working with Melissa Urban at Whole30. Oh, have you ever heard of Whole30? No, I've heard of Whole30. I've heard of Whole30, yeah. yeah. Whole30 are huge. So Melissa put out a bunch of New York best-selling um Is she like the creator books, of right? Whole30? Yeah. Yeah. Books, yeah. Okay. She, she came up with the whole concept. Wow. She's like a dare, basically. Bet you can't eat meat, fruit, and vegetables for 30 days. And really, it's about <laughs> having a relationship with your food. She sure. calls it food freedom. Absolutely. So, you know, there's all these kind of fun whole 30 type phrases that they have you know like little sayings like one of them is don't eat swipos swipos sex with your pants on so <laughs> <laughs> i would have never guessed that no, no, no it's the idea so we actually have a category called swipos in real life and it's basically saying um <laughs> having food that reminds you of a donut for example so if you're uh, trying to not eat donuts for that month uh, don't eat anything that's kind of like a donut yeah. Like just disregard anything like that and stick to things that look like a... That's smart because you don't want to associate yeah. or even put freedom. the thought in yeah. your head. In life, that's good advice. The marginal cost of, right. yeah, I don't want to drink, but maybe I'll have this. Yeah. Right. Even like a non-alcoholic beer. It's like, why? Yeah, so, it's <laughs> beer adjacent. <laughs> yeah. So we're, I'm feeling very entrepreneurial at this point because we're on... We, I, I meet her at Paleo FX. We have a whole conversation. It's uh, this whole like, all right, we'll get on a course or whatever. I had this holiday books back to England, see the parents. And then we went on to Norway, ditched the kids with the, the grandparents and went on to Norway. And we're in the Lofoten Islands, which is, have you been there? No, kind of, I haven't. It's uh, the, the north of... Uh, north Sea, right? Near yeah, yeah. Svalbard? Like inside the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Exactly, Svalbard. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's like this archipelago and it's beautiful. It's, you know, Minecraft? Yeah. And at the t at the beginning, you can randomize Minecraft and so have different hills and different clouds and different things. It's like that. Got it. And you go around the most ridiculous thing. And we were there to see the midnight sun. It was beautiful. So we're there. I've just had a dip inside the Arctic Circle. And a little, a little, it, was, it was cold, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a call. 
with Melissa and her team on a cell phone overlooking the most ridiculous view going talking about how we're going to put in whole 30 into real plans surreal wow i mean to have this kind of experience was sensory already overload yeah this kind of experience and by that time we were already 10xing my original salary mm. from the job within like six months i mean beyond our wildest dreams of right. what was going to happen yeah whole 30 come online and it's, you know, partly our relationship with Michelle Tam, because once you get the first one, everyone else goes, oh, it's legit. Right. So I got a lot to, I'm very grateful for Michelle for like, just going, hey, let's do this. You yeah. Know? And so Melissa took on her community, love real plans. All her, they have their own kind of community boards and stuff. And they were all talking about this and how much easier it was to actually have a plan. They Melissa has plans in her books, but... To be able to go, I'm going to do the whole 30. And I don't eat, you know, whatever, cucumber. Uh, and it don't, make sure. any, don't make any recipes with cucumber or onion or something, you know, whatever. So, so that really catapulted the business. And then from there, we have, you know, Wellness Mama, as I've said, and all of these other amazing Paleo MG, all these. Other, and, we, and we're still signing now. Like yesterday, we just signed. Uh, oh, AIP is huge. So autoimmune paleo. Mickey Trescott and Sarah Ballantyne, Penny one. And we just signed up with FODMAP every day. So FODMAP is like a huge deal in the health community. FROGMAP. FODMAP. It's FODMAP. low FODMAP. And it's okay. basically to do with carbohydrates. And so it solves um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. So lots of there's a significant percentage of the, uh, the public who walk around farting more often than they care to. And low FODMAP handles that. And so we've got, we've got these amazing folks that we work with all the time. You know, yeah. people who are on it. You're a resource center in a real yeah, way. Not we've, just, we've become not a, just plat- a platform right. for people to be able to, you know, share meal planning with their communities and their content. Um, That's amazing. And so, and so then we've, you know, we've, we've gone through the mill with different consultants and marketing firms and all this stuff to kind of get to where we are today. And then probably the, the, big highlight has been like last year we were in the inc 5000 you know those guys sure <laughs> and we yeah, were we yeah. were um them i know we were 91st in the u.s that's amazing third in food and drink wow 91st fastest growing private company in the u.s wow i know ridiculous that's and then and then and the way they calculate it is they look at your books from 2016 to 2018 and then the percentage growth mm-hmm. is is you know just straight up percentage, and they have your. It's very seat. objective. Yeah, yeah it's, it really is. It's like, like I think we beat out Peloton or something by. I mean, they're a eighty million dollar company. It was different, sure. different game, but still, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. I walked into Peloton the next day. I was like, "Congrats!" <laughs> <laughs> Shop assistant didn't know what to do with me, but. Um, so we talked about this earlier. Yeah. So you have you, you said you had thirty employees, yeah. mostly remote. All what, remote. All remote. How all do you guys? Remote. How do you guys manage that? What tools do you use for people listening? Obviously, Slack is probably one of Slack, them. Slack, Zoom, Trello. That's it. The trifecta. So Trello basically allows you to automate some tasks. Zoom meetings, and then Slack, your chat. Yeah. Yeah, and that's Done. it. Yeah. What is what is your secret in terms of? Uh, we've had a lot of people on who say they enjoy you know the remote workplace because because then the people can sort of set their own schedule hmm. right in this whole nine to five sitting in a chair thing is kind of outdated it doesn't really work for the the human today if they want to go do tai tai chi go do it if you need to go bring your your mother or your kid to something do it is that you see it the same way i mean on a personal level yeah on a wednesday morning i teach tai chi at 6 30 to an 87 year old who comes to my house (laughs) seriously like we sit there swinging our arms around in front of these two huge speakers listening to cool music and doing tai chi been teaching for like a decade now that's awesome and then at 7 30 another whole crew of people come in come into my house and be like yeah do the thing by 8 30 they're all out they drop their little kind of you know class fees into the into the basket and they're all out and by nine o'clock i'm sitting there in front of zoom you know running a company meeting yeah. hey guys what's up and we're off and we're dealing with stuff i have employees in lots of different states oh yeah we can talk about that in a second that was an interesting 
that that was our biggest boo boo as a company. I'll tell you that in a minute. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I, I want people to know about this actually, and hopefully learn from my mistakes. But we have developers internationally. We have you know our longest serving employee, Charlene, was is in South Africa, you know, and everyone works out. And if you're trying to man a chat line kind of good to have people in different times absolutely you know you don't want everyone together yeah right and we really I mean, it's a slightly rebellious thing to say but i just don't really feel that you spend all this money on your mortgage to come up with a nice house mm. might as well use it and uh, to disappear all day and not be in the house that you've just set up right and it's all configured especially for you with your snacks and everything else and so occasionally we'll kind of we'll meet up you know, and have people like i'll have people fly into la and we'll have like a little summit and do that kind of stuff but nice really it's, uh, I, I get a lot of time with people online and then also I have the quiet to just get on with the work that I need to do. Mm-hmm. And we also have a policy at Real Plans for people is that, you know, we say family first. So if, if you have a family thing you need to do, be it a funeral or a wedding, you know, whatever, go and do it. Live your life. Yeah. What, why are we professing to help people eat well and have have a good life when we ourselves are not doing the same thing. Like the real mission at Real Plans has always been to inspire people to make and share good food. And we feel that, I feel that when you eat good food, you just have a positive vibe about you, Mm -hmm. right? And when you have a positive vibe, you smile upon the world and the world smiles back at you. Yeah. And that means that you're handling your node of society. That's in your control. How you deal with your internal self actually means that outwardly people react to you in a different way. Yeah. When you have your... That's your, very you true. Know. And so we, our mission has That's always been well kind of... Thank you. Yeah. Um, our mission has, has always been that. And so we've kind of expanded out of that idea as much as possible and led to where we are today, you know. When you think about the future in terms of partnerships for your business, is it is it giving people the ability to maybe partnering with grocery stores in some meaningful way? We already do that. We, we're linked to Instacart. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Amazon Amazon don't have an API yet. Instacart and as soon as they do, we will. For you. Instacart, yeah, had a, had a great thing. And people love Instacart. They just like click the button. They really and do. The, the whole thing comes in. It makes it so much easier. So I said I'd talk about our biggest booboo as a company. Yeah, please yeah. do. Uh, taxes. Not... Save, <laughs> not say not saving for taxes that was fine it was the idea as i guess as an englishman you know and also at sap i should have known this too but doing an accounting system but i completely forgot about the idea that uh different states have different tax laws and we oh. we were just like you know employing anyone who was in our facebook group and super into doing support for us you know and that the the profile were basically mums who had got to the point where their kids were starting to go to school and they wanted some adult time but didn't want to leave the house mm-hmm. and so they do customer service for us it was great and we were hiring people all over the country and you know a little bit abroad but mainly all over the country and what did, what we didn't figure out is that we were not charging sales tax mm. in those states where SaaS, a SaaS business is considered a tangible good. And there was also a major thing that happened a couple of years ago where Wayfair had a high court ruling against them with South Dakota that they had a financial nexus with South Dakota. So there are two reasons why you have to charge sales tax, which is just for anyone who's not in America, pass through tax. It's like VAT in England or whatever. Right. You have to charge like an extra nine percent in California. You gather that nine percent and then you give it to the state. That's it. So hundred dollar sale, nine dollars. Hold on to it. Charge, charge the customer. And everyone in America knows that you know we see a little bit of tax, like whatever. So it doesn't really affect sales. Mm-hmm. But you need to gather the money and then give it to the state. So yeah, so we were selling all over the place, and uh, we were not charging sales tax in certain states where we had. A nexus, which means that you either have an employee or a warehouse or property in that state of your business. And secondly, that your product is a tangible good. So they all have different rules. What is deemed a nexus is different, but then what's deemed a tangible good is different. And that was the key. Mm. We didn't know. So there's this website called taxjar.com and they have a great article on what is taxable and what isn't for SaaS. And so we had to negotiate 
once we found out what was going on. Because the very first time that Texas came to us and went, hey, where's our money, y'all? You know, and we're like, right. what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was going to say, so I've looked into this a little bit, but customer service, as long as it's, I think, under 40% of the total, right? So let's pretend I have a, a, a SaaS product and you're paying 100000 uh, I think I think the rule is up to 20% of that can be cost. No? Okay. Different states have different rules. Interesting. So I, I think California, it's, it's an 80-20 split. Or- Everyone just makes it up. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So basically 20% you can you can charge yeah. the customer as a customer service fee and you don't pay taxes yeah. on that, but the 80% you have to report. Yeah. So we had, you know, we so had every a, that's a full-time <laughs> job knowing which states are are doing what. Yeah. So now we're on it. Yeah. And we're paying everyone and we're still paying off states for 2017 right now wow. just to just to cover our, our 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 tax liability. Did you have to just hire a new accountant or what was the Yeah, we had a we actually had an accountant at the time who should remain nameless. Yeah, um, of course. This is one of those things you hire the experts, they should, they right, should on know. Right, a monthly payment. At yeah. the same time, SaaS is relatively new to yeah. any accountant, and so they, how yeah, would right. they know? And anyway, and, we, um, and also, we're not... I've never been litigious anyway, and so, sure. you know, we, we didn't want to kind of go after him. I mean, what was he to know anyway? Right. So in the end, you just put it down to... I had a really good entrepreneurial friend, and he was just like, you just... This is your <laughs> degree in business, and this yeah, just... Totally. Was to me. Anyway, so one thing led to another over the last kind of two years and uh, we we turn out that emily and i were much better business partners than we were being married and so we had the most beautiful this is not two words that you get together but the most beautiful divorce ever no lawyer ever found out that we got divorced we both paid off 500 dollars to kind of do it and looked up online because we're business folk we just it's form filling <laughs> we split everything down the middle because as i said she'd worked so hard on the right. first 10 years i worked so hard on putting this whole online thing together and we decided that she'd take a step back from the business and she's gonna kind of go and do some other stuff and i've taken over doing real plans full time and all the time and it's been a most agreeable arrangement that's you excellent. know and it's I, I wanted to tell people about that because it is possible to negotiate. I, I, I think it's not, in life, it's not really the cards that you're dealt. It's more how you deal with the cards that you're dealt. Yeah, That marks absolutely. you as a character. As a business, we always make good as much as we can when things go wrong. Like we, you know, we, we try and help as much as possible. Yeah. And the same way in my private life, you know, you try and do the right thing. And of course, you know, the, there's obviously emotion attached to it and everything, but we got through it very kind of cleanly. And so now I had this idea like three years ago about making a professional version of Real Plans. I was thinking, well, we, we kept getting bombarded with people going, hey, is there a pro version of this? Because I want to give this to my clients. And I was thinking, oh, we should do this. We should do this. We held off, we held off. And then in the last year, boom just developed the whole thing and we launch on monday and uh, it's basically for anyone who wants to meal plan for their clients yeah so wow. yeah can you, can you break down what the differences are between the pro version yeah, and sure the pro version first of all you are managing a number of seats so mm-hmm. you can log into someone else's meal plan you can see their engagement with the product you can so you can understand whether they're being compliant or not um and you you know you have access to all the passwords and all that kind of stuff um in, a, in other words you can control their account and help them log in and stuff but also you can add your own templates and so a lot of practitioners mm. you know gym instructors and all that kind of stuff uh, sure. personal coaches they they want to set up some kind of a template and you can deploy that template to someone and they can still make adjustments and go oh, i'm not going to cook this on on a tuesday and i'm going to do it on a wednesday or maybe i only want to cook three times but i want to have leftovers yeah. you know for lunches mm-hmm. you can do that and you can set it up and so the templating is really strong and in we've been beta testing for months and people love that and you can also import your own recipes and you can hand that off to people too so they're able to see what's going on and plus what we do is we try and we also have a focus of trying to be entrepreneurial for the business folk as well who are who are joining real plans and so what we do we set up this amazing kind of pass through of the client so the original engagement of a client will be for you know maybe like six 12 sessions depending on what vertical you're in what industry you're in and then you let them go but really your desire as a instruct you know a trainer or someone you're in a position you're like a teacher you're saying hey here's here's something that will help you heal either Mm -hmm. mentally or physically 
And so typically, like a registered dietitian will be, you know, doing some various tests and stuff and then go, you need to eat this much protein, this much carbohydrate. And here's a, and they rummage around the desk drawer and everyone, <laughs> everyone hates meal planning. Here you go. Here's my high fat meal plan. 1988. Yeah. There you go. That's black and, then, and white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's no one really serving that market in the way that we can, because we're offering like a full service, beautiful meal planner that's that we have fallen over and failed so many times in the last five years. We might just know a little bit now about how to, you know, serve that up for people. Yeah. But that's the end result. But what we do is we then turn those ex-clients of theirs into affiliates of the pro. So they get affiliate commission for the lifetime oh, wow. okay. of the client if they stick with real plans. Sure. So they're that's smart. finding us clients. We want to thank them. You for reward that. them, yeah. Reward them. And so now they've got a passive income model. So there's, you know, in business, have you heard that term sawdust? You mm-hmm. know, in, in, in business, yeah. you, you know, I might be running a pool equipment website or what have you. And all these swimming instructors kind of, you know, are coming in asking certain questions and you're like, oh, swimming instructors need to have clients. And maybe I can. And that's sawdust all of a sudden. There's a side business that you can suddenly start up. Right. Um, a derivative. You know, yeah. Sorts, yeah. Swimcoachinglessons.com and, you know, whatever. Maybe that exists already. Um, <laughs> If not, buy it. <laughs> um, but that sawdust is, is what we think of as, you know, how, how do we help that? What, what, what business is that and where does that go? Yeah. So many gems today from you. I like all your expressions. Really, really cool. Yeah. When you think about the future for, for your business or maybe even in terms of culture, in terms of trend, in terms of food, you're kind of, you're creating it, right? And mm-hmm. then you're finding all these other avenues to branch out. Where do you see your business in the next like five years? What things have become really important to you as you scale? Where do you see culture moving right now? We can talk about maybe delivery is all the rage. Do you think about that in terms of your business? Well, delivery is an interesting one because we're going to be partnering uh, in Q2 with someone who delivers farm boxes. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the inventory of the farm box, put it into the meal plan. And part of the upside mm. of having this farm box is that you're able to then have a meal plan that goes with it so that you know how to use it all. Sign me up for that. We're in. Right? Yeah, Pretty cool. That's smart. Yeah. Um, actual full on delivery services like Blue Apron or what have you is a different model, really. Right. Because, and again, you know, I'm never into bashing other businesses. It just serves a different market. It's for people who want to have packaging, arrive at their house, they open it up, they eat cook it. it up, eat it, and done. They don't think about it. Yeah. What we're doing is we're saying, come up with your exact diet. Commit to how many times you're actually going to cook. Oh, and make leftovers. I mean, like, one, think people should consider leftovers as a good thing. Okay, why, Not, why is that? Well, because you cook less. Right, okay, right. You know, I mean... I got you. One, one of the... There's two images that come or to mind. Or invite a friend over. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I have two images that came to mind with real plans. One is you cross the threshold of the store right? Supermarket. And you go, oh, what am I going to buy? And you have that slight panic. Yes. And you're like, <laughs> I eat chicken, so I'll buy some chicken. Right. Where's and the chocolate aisle? I, right. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother story. And I, I, I think I eat rice. Do I have rice? I'll get some rice. And then you come home and then you go, oh, what am I going to eat? I don't know. I'll just order pizza. Yeah. You know, you, Tasteless you know, chicken. Plan. Yeah. Right. Plan. The second one, the second image that always comes to mind, and I keep thinking of these as kind of marketing campaigns, is that moment where you open the fridge and, you know, like if you're at Christmas or whatever, you're at home and you're at the parents' house and you open up the fridge and it's full of food and you're mm. like, oh, and you go, oh, what's under this tin foil? Ooh. And it's like lots of things to heat up and to make and sauces right. here and that stuff. But I'm getting if, you're a, if, you're a, if you're a bachelor... Or you're kind of, you know, you're, or you're in a family that doesn't cook and you depend on eating out and take out whatever. You open the fridge and it's completely empty. <laughs> yeah. Void of all food. Just right? alcohol. Yeah. But have you ever had this where you then close the fridge again, right? And then you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing this commercial in my yeah. mind. And then you dream really, really hard. And I've you're done, like, I do this every now day. Now this <laughs> time, I'm going to open the fridge and a three-course chicken roast meal is going to... Oh, still not there. (laughs) That is what I'm trying to avoid. And so leftovers, if you're going to put all the trouble to like, I don't know, chopping up garlic and onions and doing all this stuff and making, making a whole meal, 
then there's potential energy then sitting in your fridge. Mm. And when you open it the next time, you go, oh my gosh, I'm, I've just cooked myself even. I've got an entire meal right here that I'm going to eat. Yay. And within five minutes, you're just eating it. Mm-hmm. Leftovers are cool. But you've got a plan for it. the sawdust. Yeah. The yeah. sawdust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so what is left over. <laughs> I really love it. Where can people find you? Uh, realplans.com. And then if you're a professional, realplans.com slash pro. Yeah, if you're a chef listening or a fitness trainer, yeah. the pro is obviously for you. I'm sure offices, if you're if a you, tech office with a with a right. chef, for well, you also. Exactly. Or if you can't even remember that, just go to mealplans.com. I've got the 301 redirect that goes straight to my company. There so that's go. good too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Anthony. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks, guys. Bye. We here at Startup Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think, either through rating us on the podcast app or by sliding into our DMs. You can find us both on Facebook and Instagram at Startup the Storefront. The team is comprised of Diego Torres Palma, Nick Conrad, Natalia Capolini, Megan Conrad, and Haley Nelson. Our theme song is composed by Double Touch. If you want to learn more about the products and businesses featured on today's episode, check out the links in the show notes. And if you enjoyed the episode, consider subscribing because we've got a lot more great guests coming up that you won't want to miss. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.